Hi there, this is Andrew Paul Smith and this is day 20 of my series of 100 inspirational videos in 100 days. And today I'd like to talk about sin. Ooh. Now then Andrew, be careful what you say. <laughs> you might get yourself tangled up in knots. No notes without the aid of a safety net and uh, I want to talk about sin. And I feel a bit like John Lennon did about the song, when he, he sings in the song Revolution, uh, if you want uh, to send me to send money to people with minds that hate, I have to tell you that you'll have to wait. But in the chorus he says, um, I'm out of the revolution. And then he says in, he goes out in. And I'm like that with sin, <laughs> because um, I was brought up, to believe that there's right and wrong and the uh, the main problem that we've got on planet earth is because Adam and Eve ate from the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil and that's why we're in such a mess uh, and it was called original sin because God said there was just one thing that you mustn't do and that was to eat from the tree of the knowledge of uh, good and evil because in that day it says in the Hebrew uh, dying you will die so basically, it's the end to your, um, to your, uh, not your divinity, but your humanity, that it will come to an end, and that's why people die. And that's what uh, I was taught, and I went to Bible school, and I learned about, and it's very much ingrained in me. So what I have to say today, it goes against my, the grain of who uh, I was brought up to be. And uh, it, it does it does scare me saying what I'm going to say, but I'm going to say it anyway. Uh, that that any body who believes in a God that will punish them for their sin, but made them that way. Well, no, didn't make Adam and Eve that way, but made everybody else carry uh, the sin of Adam um, as part of the DNA, uh, and that he, uh, this God has prepared. A hell and damnation and fire and brimstone for such people who uh, who do these uh, acts of sin uh, need to go and confess them uh, if you're a Roman Catholic uh, uh, or you've got to uh, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ you've got to go and tell your brother or your elder at church about the stuff that that's troubling you it's a way, I believe this, honestly, and, and I'm, I'm the guy that went to Bible school. I, I'm, I'm the guy that used to stand in the pulpit and preach this stuff. Um, I believe that it's a way that the church has got, maybe it wasn't set up that way but ori originally, but now it's a way for controlling the masses. And we need to be independent of, of the good opinion of other people. And if we feel as individuals that we have been given a task to do, even though it might be seen uh, as sinful, my, my mum, now there's an interesting thing, my mum used to be told off by the neighbours when I was a tiny little baby, there weren't any throwaway nappies, they're all terribly nappies, they have to be washed, um, and my, my mum hung out the washing, my uh, clean nappies, not the dirty ones, she'd washed them. Uh, she hung them out on the Sunday. And the neighbours said that you're not supposed to do work on a Sunday. It's the day of rest. And my mum said to the neighbours, what's needful isn't sinful. Basically, my son, this little fellow here, uh, my son needs uh, clean nappies uh, all the time. So you can't say you'll have to sit in your... Uh, in your dirty nappy until Sunday's over because your mum's not doing any work. That's completely ridiculous. So we're stuck in this dualistic nature, uh, this dualistic universe where there is up and down and right and wrong. But when we fall out with people about whether we think that what they're doing is right or wrong, right or wrong is something, in my opinion, uh, that you've got to deal with for yourself. You've got to decide what's right for you and what's wrong for you. Yes, the Bible's there. The other scriptures are there to give us pointers. But at the end, it's, uh, it should be, if, if you're a good evangelical, which uh, I, I, I misunderstand, don't I? Because um, the pastor 
what the pastor says in the uh, Pentecostal church seems to be the law. Uh, just like the Pope, you know, whatever the Pope says uh, when he's speaking ex cathedra, uh, he's actually speaking on behalf of God. So we don't need to read the Bible. Yes, we do. But the Bible itself has got to be interpreted by the reader. It's like looking in the mirror. If you can see something in those scriptures that helps you with your day, you should listen. But as for sin itself, the concept of sin, um, it, it seems to me alien to a loving God. Um, and that the, the, the right and wrong thing is punishable by eternal damnation. Um, that's not to say that um, some of the behaviour of some of the people on the planet uh, is um, not helping the rest of us and has to be dealt with. But in, in the very personal life that you and I have got, um, then we, we need to have our own experience, our own one-on-one -on -one with the higher power, whether we call it God or the universe or uh, energy or whatever it is that we see, that higher power, that higher self uh, as being. We need our own personal interaction <clears throat> with that, um, that part of the creation. So, um, maybe I'm not making myself too clear here, <laughs> but as far as I'm concerned, that the, the way that, that sin has been described, um, there isn't really anything that bad or that good that would deserve um, for someone to be uh, eternally separated from the oneness. And we all belong to the oneness and there's nothing we can do to separate ourselves from the oneness. We are part of the whole and uh, the good and the bad things that happen, um, we should be seeking to become a non-dual being where the things that happen around us uh, haven't we, we don't allow them to have the effect that an emotionally charged person would have. You said that that really hurt me. No, nothing hurt you unless you wanted it to hurt you, unless you allowed it to hurt you. And so that's that's where I am on on the subject of sin. Uh, maybe I'll wait till <laughs> till uh, video number forty before I talk about anything. Uh, as deep as this again, but just to be at peace with yourself, to be comfortable in your own skin, and not to uh, allow the judgments of other people to affect you adversely. Allow your own opinion of yourself to grow uh, and to feel good. Uh, may, may be, be aware that anything that anybody else says to you, it's up to you how you deal with that. So don't um, don't fall into that trap of, of being worried about the uh, good opinion of other people, um, even God, because God loves you. Uh, if you believe uh, in a God, then the only God worth believing in is a God of love, a God of unity, a God of oneness, a God of inclusion. Um, you see the stories of Jesus, the very people that the religious leaders were saying, hey, let's, you know, we shouldn't have anything to do with um, the prostitutes and the publicans and the tax gatherers and the zealots, uh, the, the National Front. All those people, because that's what Simon the Zealot was, he was a National Front person, he wanted the Romans out of Palestine. Um, we don't need to have um, those kind of people around us. And yet Jesus was known as a friend of sinners, right? <laughs> so I, I, I'd, I'd, I'm, I'm sort of torn, as you can imagine, because of the schooling, the Sunday schooling that I had about sin. But I know this much, that Jesus was to be found with the, 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 the ne'er-do-wells, the people who um, the religious community didn't want to have anything to do with. He was with them. He was a friend of, of the publicans and the sinners and the tax gatherers and, and the prostitutes. He, he was there with them. Read the story. You know, wake up, church. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm still torn. But uh, I think that there is um, condemn the sin, but not the sinner. Yeah. Don't do that thing, you know, he, he, the woman caught in the act of adultery, he said to her, um, where, uh, where, where are those that accuse you? Neither do I accuse you, go and sin no more. So it's like, the sin, actually, the word sin, and I should have said this at the beginning, the word sin is a, is a Roman archery term, 
and they used to draw back the, the bow and arrow, let the arrow fly, and it was supposed to hit the center of the target. But if it missed, if it, if it missed the mark, it was a sin. It's, it's like a, a gaming term. It's a foul, yeah? In soccer or football, it's a foul, and, and it drops short of the target. And that's what sin is. It's not um, such a big deal. <clears throat> and Jesus loves sinners. All right. So this is Andrew Paul Smith signing off. www.apsmithonline.com. Info at andrewpaulsmithonline.com. Uh, I'd love to speak to you. Uh, don't start throwing your arrows at me <laughs> and shooting me down in flames. But I think the, the oneness of all humanity and the loving of the sinner rather than the loving of the sin uh, is where we need to aim at. All right. And then we'll probably fall short again. Yeah. Okay. God bless you. Namaste. Love and light to you. And speak to you again tomorrow for number 21. We're coming of age tomorrow. Bye. Bye.